Raise taxes on the rich. Wants to radically tax the rich. Upping the top tax bracket in America to 80% or more. Super wealthy well, have to start paying their fair share of taxes. Oh, womp, womp, womp. For the 1%. Yeah, tax the rich. We hear that a lot. But who are the rich and what exactly do we want and expect will happen when we do tax them? The rich, let's say the top 1%. Earn around five hundred and ninety-seven thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars, according to a recent study done by Forbes. That's who the rich are. Now, as far as what we can expect will happen when we do tax them, that's a little bit more complex. Last week, I was in a short-term financial modeling class, and the teacher told us that there was a speaker coming, and if we went, we would get five extra points. A few hours later, I find out it's by a guy named Arthur Laffer. Laffer. I think back to the previous year and how I did some research on the Laffer curve for a presentation on fiscal policy. And then it hits me, the fact that this talk is given by the exact same guy that came up with that curve, that has served with several presidential administrations, is an expert in economics, and was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom. So I go to the talk. I guess I should explain what the Laffer curve even is. The Laffer curve looks something like this. It shows the relationship between the tax rate and the actual amount of revenue collected by the government. What it proposes is that if you raise taxes enough, government spending will actually start to go down as well. Now, when does that happen and why? Why? Simply put, because if you tax someone at 100%, they won't work. They're not incentivized to work. You're just gonna take everything from them. So no taxable revenue. And if you tax 0%, then of course the government takes home no revenue either. Everyone across the political aisle will agree on this, but when does this happen? When do we cross that line into which higher taxes doesn't necessarily mean higher revenue? This is where the discrepancy lies. Democrats think the hump is at a higher tax rate and therefore they should tax more to collect more revenue, while Republicans think that the hump is at a lower tax rate, therefore to increase government revenue, the tax rate should be lower. Now there are some criticisms of the Laffer curve, stating that it assumes that people will act in their best economic interest, but I guess I'm willing to assume that as well. Now what this curve does a good job of presenting is that after a certain point, people will be incentivized to keep on producing because they are getting taxed at such a high rate. Yeah, okay, so the government can go too far. What? Yeah, I know, mind blown. Okay, so I explained the Laffer curve, where were we? Tax the rich. All right, what do we expect will happen when we do? Well, the reason I brought up Arthur Laffer is because in his talk, he brought up some stats recorded on some data collected by the IRS on the relationship between the marginal income tax and the periods of under and over performance in the economy. What we found with this information is when the tax rates were up, nearly as high as 94% in some periods, was when the economy was underperforming, and when we had periods of lower marginal tax rate, that's when the economy was overperforming. Now, these are the facts, but correlation doesn't equal causation, so it's important to look at the reason why. Well, it might have something to do with the fact that people don't like their money being taken away from them, never to be seen again for reasons that they don't know. Maybe it also has something to do with the that when you tax people that are more productive and you give to those that are less productive, productivity across the board just goes down. But I don't know. This brings us to the topic of redistribution. Redistribution, in simple terms, is just taking from the rich and giving to the poor, which sounds nice and well, maybe even just and fair. The issue is that by taking from those that are more productive, you discourage them from producing. And by giving to those who are less productive, you also discourage them from producing. And you're only left with less overall productivity. To better illustrate this, let's pretend that everyone is taking a class. And whoever got 90s and 100s on that first test, to those you will take however many points they are away from the average, and you will give to those who got 50 and 60s in order to bring them up to the average. Now this may not happen instantaneously, maybe not even the second or third test, but definitely by the fourth or fifth, those who are carrying the class will be disincentivized from studying and doing well because they know that whatever they do above the average, those points will just be taken away from them. And the ones who are getting those extra points will also be disincentivized from doing well because they know that they will get some points to bring them up to the average. And yes, we did it. Great inequality was taken away. Everyone is equal now and everyone is dead. Because maybe the goal the whole time was never actually help the poor. Because the logic and data show that when you tax the rich, the poor aren't actually helped. Maybe the goal the whole time was just to hurt the rich. Because it's important to remember that when we raise the highest tax rate for the very elite, the very rich, government revenues go down, the rich shelter their income, lower income groups are damaged, and yes, the rich are damaged as well, which maybe was the whole point. Now, why are the lower income groups damaged when you tax the rich? Outside of the example from the classroom, in real life, how does this happen? It is because when you tax the rich, the cost of production across the board goes up, prices go up, and people who end up taking the hit are always the ones at the bottom. Sure, the rich are hurt too, but at what cost? Now, we clearly need taxes. I'm not arguing that we don't. Government definitely needs a lot of money to spend on a lot of different things. And as much as many can argue, probably rightly so, that the government overspends on a lot, it's clear that taxes are still needed. If nothing else, there's always gonna be members in society that need help from the government. And the government has not only the right, but the responsibility to actually help. The issue is that you can't make the benefits of being poor so attractive that you encourage able-bodied people to stop working because they can simply rely on the government. Outside of the economic catastrophe that this is, it's also a moral backwards thing to do. To allow people to so heavily rely on the government that they lose their will to work. To find meaning and purpose in the responsibility that comes from work. The other thing to consider is that taxes suck and everyone hates them. How much do people hate them? Just look at the American Revolution. That's how much. We are taxed when we get our paychecks and income taxes by the federal government and in some cases by the state governments as well if you're unlucky enough to live in one of those states. Then there's payroll taxes paid by employees and employers alike. There's sales tax, there's property tax, there's even a death tax. You can't even die in peace. You're still getting taxed. I guess there really is only two things guaranteed in life, death and tax. There's also inheritance taxes, there's capital gains taxes, there's wealth taxes, but hey, at least we don't get taxed for our tea. Anyways, that's all I got. Subscribe.